How many times have you heard that saying, not long till Christmas already this year? <laughs> um, so we're going to do just a bit, a bit of admin. My name's Ross. I'm sure you know me, so I'm not going to uh, do any introductions on my part, but I'll definitely introduce our wonderful guests and go through everything that was promised to you for signing up. So um, just uh, in the chat box, just let me know where you're watching from. This is your one opportunity for me to give your... City, town, village, seaport, boat, whatever, wherever you are located, school, home, or whatever, a little shout out online. Um, everything's going to get recorded. Uh, everything will be circulated tomorrow. Um, so if you hang on a little bit, I'll get all the information to you as uh, once we finish. Um, so uh, let's see. Victoria in Southampton, thank you for joining us. Um, when was in Southampton? Uh, September. Well, not far from Southampton. Um, Darlington, very cold, says Paula. 11 more get-ups, hurrah. <laughs> Natalie, how many more get-ups have you got? Oh, we're until the 17th, so we've got two, two and a half weeks. Two so. and a half more, oh. Two and a half more, yeah. <laughs> I, haven't got, I haven't quite brought myself to do the, the days the, yet. The countdown <laughs> yet, yeah. Well, you're all right, your energy levels are good then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so where are you watching from, everybody? Um, while we are uh, letting people join in, I'm going to get things kicked off. Let me just show you where everyone has signed up from. So uh, such is the nature of my audience. We've got people from all over the place. Um, so we've got someone here potentially watching from Namibia, uh, whether live or recorded, which we'll soon find out. Um, strangely, I said just before we came online, my third largest audience are teachers in the Philippines. And let me just zoom into the UK because this is where we're broadcasting from. So here we go. This is where you all are watching from. And just for, I'm gonna, I've got a little map prepared, but this is where Natalie is based in Highlands Primary School. So we'll introduce her in a moment formally. Um, so that's that. So last chance for comments in the chat box. Where are you watching from? and we'll get started. So just to make sure you're in the right place, um, an advertised webinar with uh, Natalie Palmer, uh, Highlands Primary School in East London, as well as with Gary Trotter here um, from LBQ. We're gonna demo some bits of software right towards the end. Um, and what we're discussing is the challenge of COVID and the no more marking method. So let me just put a couple of things up on the screen, just go through the agenda. Um, as ever, comments in the Zoom uh, come to me only, they're not public. And you decide if you want to have your camera on or not, but the recording will get circulated with everyone who has signed up. Okay, so here come uh, the slides. Let me see, let me get this up. You'd think I'd have mastered this by now after all this time. Uh, okay, here we go. So what I'd like to go through, um, just a short session together, just introduction and context. Uh, we're going to meet Natalie formally and Gary in a moment. Uh, talk about the Highlands story, little Q&A, little show and tell with LBQ. And then this is a key link uh, I'd like to visit once you finish. I've got a couple of QR codes there. So there's the Highlands QR codes. So if you've got a mobile phone to hand, you will need one actually, uh, or another tab on your device. We're going to do a little bit of survey and play with the software. And then there's the QR code there for learning by questions. So on your mobile phone, if you just scan those QR codes, it'll take you to two landing pages. I'll show those to you at the end as well. Um, so you can have a little play with, with that information. So uh, let's, let's kick things off formally. Um, so the session was pitched at how one school in Havering rose to the challenge of uh, an extremely diverse cohort without sacrificing the staff wellness. And this is music to my ears. Um, and we were just having a quick chat about, uh, Natalie said something quite, uh, that resonates with me strongly. Uh, and we'll pick this up in a moment is, you know, how she changes the way she approaches marking and never going back to how things were before. And I guess, you know, especially after two years of COVID and all the pressures that all of us have uh, faced in our schools, certainly staff well-being should be at the forefront. And a lot of schools that I work with, they are really looking at feedback, marking assessment policies and trying to do things differently. So in terms of uh, a little context, um, 
on the screen here, oh, a couple of maps. There's a little uh, map of the southeast coast of England. And you can see where Highlands is. Let's just zoom in a little bit to um, London there. Uh, so it's on a border between Hornchurch and Rumford. Uh, Natalie, uh, correct me wrong if I've got wrong any facts in a moment. Um, very diverse cohort, very uh, challenging part of the country. And their situation's not been unique. You know, we've all gone through COVID. Across Havering, I suppose, schools have always been made up of pupils from vast different backgrounds and abilities. So people watching outside of the UK, just giving you that context there. Um, but interestingly, after COVID, it's become a little bit more extreme. So Natalie will uh, give us some information in a moment. And how Highlands Primary School managed to take this in their stride and keep staff away from being you know, crushed in this process with extreme, you know, additional workload with COVID, but things that we can do in our control, such as reducing that marking burden, uh, we're going to find out. So um, I've got Natalie here, uh, and I'm going to ask also Gary just to say hello so everyone knows who's who, and then we'll get into our little Q&A. Um, and I've got a little survey I'm going to do in a moment, so I'm just going to turn the screen off. Um, Natalie, could you just say hello and introduce yourself to everyone, and then I'll ask Gary to pop in. And you just need to unmute your microphone, Natalie. There we go. Can't hear you, Natalie. Gary, maybe if you go first. Yeah, hi. Yes, yeah, so I'm Gary Trotter from Learning by Questions. And um, hello, Rob. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> We're here now. Shall I carry on? I'll carry on anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm, a, I'm an ex deputy head teacher, primary school teacher from North Pacific. But, I, um, I seem to be having quite a few problems with. Oh, there we go. Carry on, Gary. I'll, I'll send a message to uh, Natalie. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So. Um, primary school teacher, deputy head teacher from Norfolk and Suffolk, but also I've uh, worked with EdTech for over 20 years and um, I'm now part of the LBQ team. Um, we've been working with Highlands uh, for a while now and uh, they're, they're going to be an ambassador school for us as well. So we're, we're pleased to have them board and it's a really interesting story uh, that hopefully we're going to hear in a, in a few minutes. Okay, I'm just going to um, ask Natalie to give it one more try. Thank you, Gary. I'm just going to Let's see. Uh, okay, Natalie, can you hear us okay? Because you're the star of the show, so I'm, I'm going to make sure that we can... Hello? Yeah, there we go. Yes. Hello, I can hear you. A little bit of a delay. No, that seems better in, in and out with what you were saying. Hopefully, I think we're okay. So a little you, bit, but I think we're okay now. Okay. Hopefully. Can I get you to um, introduce yourself, Natalie, to everyone and tell us a little bit about the school before we kick things off formally? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Perfect. Oh. Panic over. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Natalie Palmer. Um, I'm the assistant head teacher at Highlands Primary School. Um, we're um, just on the outskirts of London, so we're on a, a border of ha um, within Havering on Hornchurch and Romford. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much our location. Um, I am also the maths lead at our school as well as um, the lead of assessment. So. COVID has definitely been a challenge in, in many, many ways, um, but definitely when it came to the aspect of assessment and the, the concept of how our no marking within our school um, has absolutely facilitated that. So we've been a no marking school now for nearly five years, give or take, um, and very much along the lines of verbal feedback um, and no marking books in any shape or form for the, for, for the entirety of our time being a no marking school. Fantastic. So um, thank you, Natalie. Now I'm going to ask you some questions. So everyone, I'm going to do a bit of a talking head. But before I do, I just want to get things back on the screen for a moment. Just uh, take Natalie off there. Um, so on your devices, please, I've got a little survey here. I just want to know a little bit more about the audience so we can frame our conversation 
uh, suit you. So at the top of the screen, you should be able to see a hyperlink. Um, fingers crossed this all, uh, looks like I've got a little te technical glitch here. Let me just um, try again, you know, such as the world of Zoom and everything else. Um, if not, I'm going to stop this. Uh, let's see. Let's try one more time. Otherwise, we'll get straight down to business. No, nope, I'm going to ignore that, right? My apologies, everybody. Okay, so let's turn that off. Let's just get down to conversation. So, um, Natalie, tell me a little bit more about Highlands Primary before the pandemic. What, what, what was the kind of context and, you know, diversity of your students at the school? Yeah, I mean, we've always had a high fluctuation of children coming in. The mobility within our school has always been quite high. Being a border school, um, like I mentioned before, between um, Hornchurch and Romford, we've had sort of a, quite a mixed cohort. Um, but then very much so, we've always had um, a high fluctuation from children moving from inner London schools to outer London, where we would be classified. Um, but we would have to say that post-COVID, um, this was just completely thrown into an array. Um, we saw the largest amount of additional children that we've ever seen uh, enrol within our school. Um, and the, the variety of that cohort was, again, like something we'd never seen before, such a high intake of children with English as an additional language, um, our free school meal um, premium, Premium and pupil premium allocations um, skyrocketed. Um, and we found that that was um, through the, the inner London uh, changes coming into to, to Essex. Um, but we, we definitely had, uh, well, certainly within my teaching career before, um, so, for example, we had children coming from different countries. I mean, we've always had a, a high intake of children with EAL, um, but particularly after COVID, we had uh, children from so many different countries, Romania, Lithuania, um, and they would particularly going back and forth between those countries during COVID. Um, it was just an absolute... Um, mind boggle really in terms yeah. of how we um, were ever going now, to, now in my research, to start with um, the process of ensuring Natalie, that we were giving the best for these children. There's a slight delay on your side in terms of connection. We are hearing everything you say, but I think there's a bit of five second delay. So I'll persevere, but um, uh, at least in my research, schools with a very disadvantaged or diverse right. cohort are typically schools where right. marketing is a bit tougher and harder. Um, so where do you start with a situation like that? You know, in terms of assessments, running assessments for students, finding out what yeah. their needs are, give, give people a little bit more context into where do you start? Um, I mean, in terms of prior to coming, COVID, it was always ensuring, obviously, that those children were settled and that they were comfortable within the classroom environment. Um, and then following through with baseline assessments um, and sort of just getting a gauge of where those children are in terms of where they've uh, come from and how they would then um, fit within our class cohorts. Um, COVID was no different. Um, after the pandemic, we obviously had a huge um, influx of children um, and we had to make sure that they were confident, comfortable um, and very much well-being was put at the, the front and foremost of um, our uh, approach to this. So with the baseline assessments, um, we have used an array of different things before. Um, however, to ensure that we would providing the, the best for our children as they came in, we decided um, that with those baseline assessments, it was going to be um, better to use a, um, an online facility uh, for reading and for maths. 
Um, as a school, we chose LBQ, um, which uh, is very quite heavily um, affiliated with White Rose Math, which is something we use within our school as well. So we use the end of year assessments for those. And as a no marking school, it absolutely worked perfectly. Um, the children were able to log on, work through the assessment at their own pace. Um, it was very much individualised for that for the particular children that we were assessing um, and gave us data that was just staggering. Um, I mean, for example, we had gaps in maths abilities in ranges like we've never seen before. So, for example, I'm a, a year six teacher um, and we currently have children who are still have gaps in knowledge from the year two curriculum. So we have at the moment the idea of assessing and then teaching um, gaps in knowledge from years two to year six. So the extremity of gaps is like something we've never seen before. So with that in mind, we uh, in using LBQ, um, those assessments were um, accessible for those varied cohorts. We needed to make sure that those assessments weren't knocking the children's confidence and sort of setting them back even further than the two years that they had lost. Um, but what we absolutely love about the, the baseline assessment that we did was one, obviously, that the marking is done for us and the children get that individual feedback um, in the moment of them actually um, accessing the assessment. And they were able to work at their own pace um, and really just build the confidence as they went through as well, which was so, first and Natalie, foremost. I'm just going to, because um, I know there's a little bit of a delay, I'm going to just start to pose my question before you finish. We've got Gary on the uh, on the call also from LBQ. And before I come back to Gary, um, who's a former teacher and works with LBQ, who will be showing everyone the resource just for people. Could you give us a little, little insight into what LBQ is from your perspective, Natalie? Um, how it's, you know, why did you introduce it? Um, you know, what progress have you seen the children making as a result? And then, and then we'll also talk about staff wellbeing in a moment. Um, absolutely. So we, first and foremost, we needed those children to be settled before we could even consider uh, the, the learning that we would need, that would need to do baseline assessments within the first couple of weeks. We waited, we um, ensured that they were comfortable within the classrooms again. Um, but then through the use of LBQ, um, the, the low stakes assessment, if we can call them that, were it was a, an element of fun, I suppose. The children uh, didn't feel like they were doing assessments. They were online, um, they um, were colourful for them, they had visual clues for these children, uh, for the whole cohort, sorry. Um, the children, like I said before, um, was given individual feedback, which inevitably um, led to a greater success for them. Um, I suppose the best way to describe it is that the children were learning to learn again, but they didn't realise it was in the, the format that we, they were used to when we were in school before remote learning. Um, I mean, I have three children in particular who spring to mind. Um, all three have EAL, as, an, um, as English as an additional language, um, all very low ability, um, but through the use of the assessments of LBQ and the subsequent interventions that we've been able to put into place with LBQ, um, they have been able to make progress through the visual support that they um, that the, the program gives. It sort of gives them something to hold on to, um, whether it be a number line or some sort of other imagery that gives them prompts and something that they can visually see, even if they're not understanding the language of the question. So it, it's so diverse, it, it worked absolutely perfectly for our whole, our whole cohort. Um, again, everybody was moving at their own pace. So even the children who um, hadn't uh, enrolled in the September time um, and were previous children of, of Highlands, they were able to work at their own pace, get used to the aspect of the classroom again um, essentially, it was, again, just building the confidence of how to um, learning how to learn again. And I'm a very firm believer that we can't do anything unless we've got the confidence to do it in the first place. Um, but yeah, it essentially, it really, really did 
inform us, us as teachers, but also supported us as teachers as well, because not only did it help fill the children's gaps in knowledge and give us as teachers the, the understanding of what those gaps were, it also gave us the idea of, okay, well, we don't have to sit down and mark mm. 30 different reading papers, 30 different papers. Um, because of the, the concept of LBQ, it just took that overwhelmed feeling away from us. Um, so, um, the question Natalie, set again, I'm going to interrupt because I know there's a little delay on your side, but uh, you mentioned the word confidence and I've been, um, I've been researching teacher wellbeing for nearly a decade now and we, we know that staff wellbeing, particularly COVID, has been even higher on the agenda. And I know from my travels to schools around the world that marking is the number one thing that drives teachers crazy. How were the spirits mm -hmm. of your staff in your school before the pandemic and where are they now? I mean, when we went over to being a no marking school, the I would say the spirits lifted completely. It was a bit of a transition and very and much so a happen, learning Natalie? curve. We were about five years ago now, we've been no marking. So we had uh, lots of training on it, um, very much um, a step by step element to um, going over to this process. Um, and we just took our own, our own time with it. We made sure that the children were um, happy with it as well. And so it wasn't so much of a shock to them when they weren't seeing the, the dreaded red pen and the ticks and the crosses and the next steps and things like that. So it, it was very much a learning curve for us all. But yeah, that was about five years ago. Um, and it has literally been one of the best things I think we've ever done within our school. Um, so that, yeah, that was before pandemic. And I feel that because the pandemic literally affected every single one of us, the the confidence and the well-being of staff completely took a hit 100 percent um everybody worked so hard whether you were in school teaching whether you were remote learning teaching um, and the thought of returning to school knowing that these children had lost two years of learning essentially um, and the inevitable assessments that we would have to do was just so exhausting to consider especially when we're thinking along the lines of assessing these children, but then also implementing the teaching and learning that we would have to do as a result of the assessments. And it, it just was a bit of a, oh, okay, how are we going to do this? So, um, yeah. Natalie, we, uh, I, I know my research, when I published my research on verbal feedback just before the pandemic, the teachers told me that they were now doing different approaches to marking, essentially re removing that burden of time and instead planning better lessons, which met the diverse needs of their kids. Uh, what, what are your staff now doing if they're not marking? Well, we are essentially giving time back into that quality teaching again. We're, the time that we would have spent marking hours upon hours of, of uh, evenings or weekends sometimes as well. I mean, those trolleys that we used to bring out of a weekend full of books was just heart rendering sometimes where you think, well, that's my weekend gone. It's given us as teachers a life back, um, but it's also enabled us to put back into the love of teaching that we all have. Mm -hmm. um, our evenings now are essentially picking up on the misconceptions of the day. So very much in that in the moment teaching. So um, it would be particularly for a maths lesson, a group of children haven't particularly understood a concept. We can now put that time into addressing those misconceptions, either the following day or in a small group session in the afternoon, those kind of things. It's We've got the element and the beauty of time back again and being able to really um, put the focus back onto the teaching, which first and foremost is, I believe, what, what we should be doing. Yeah, number and, one priority. Um, absolutely, yeah. Now, there are so many things to be, you know, there's so many solutions and things that schools can choose to do. And obviously you've explained your school context, which sounds um, very rewarding as well as very challenging. Um, you know, for other schools or, or teachers watching out there that might find themselves in a similar context or wondering how they can start a no more marking approach and be a no more marking school, what would you say is the kind of most important thing for them to consider? You know, you've been on this journey now five years 
so you, you're now into the kind of well embedding and refining stage, aren't you? So what would be your advice? Don't go all in in the first instance. Don't just completely scrap everything that you already have in place. Um, it was really a case of building the ethos within our school. It, we had to have teachers buy into it as much as our SLT and our MLT. Um, it was very much a case of taking it step by step, maybe starting with one particular subject. Maths, for example, um, it lends itself very, very well to um, the no marking um, aspect and giving verbal feedback and having the answers already available within the classroom, that kind of thing. Um, so take it step by step would be my one recommendation, most definitely. Great. Well, I, um, I'm going to bring in Gary um, for a little kind of show and tell. Thank you, Natalie. I'll, I'll put you off the spot for a moment. Um, <laughs> Gary, could you um, maybe give us a couple of things on the screen for people to see, people that have not seen LBQ before? Yes. Um, and tell us a little bit about what it can do. Yeah. Can I just share my screen? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, two seconds. Um, hopefully this is the one here. There you can see. So um, yeah, can hopefully, see. can you see learning by questions? Yes, all, all clear. Yeah. So um, uh, just it's been great listening to Natalie. And I'm, I'm really interested in this idea of no marking because uh, as next primary school to you, Deputy Head, you can imagine... Um, spent a lot of my life marking and um it's, one of the reasons I, I absolutely love lbq is because it, it it does the marking for you now you know that it can't do everything i'm not suggesting that but it certainly it can help and i know that it's helped at highlands um interestingly one of the things that natalie will, will tell you is um how much time lbq can save not just for teachers not just in um marking but also in planning as well because with LBQ, what we've done is we've put over 90,000 questions together, grouped them together in the question sets uh, for English, maths, primary science, uh, some geography and history as well. Uh, and these can be sent to children's devices. And as Natalie said, they can work through at their own pace. And one of the great things about learning by questions is that we then give them the immediate feedback uh, through LBQ. Um, and so what you can see here quickly is this is the LBQ. So you log into LBQ, this is the page you go to. Uh, and how do you find resources? Well, we're, we're about saving time. So there's several ways. One is uh, you can just click on mathematics here and I'll show that in a second. Uh, and then you can search through our resources and find what you need. So if you wanted those assessments for, let's say end of year assessments, they can be found very quickly. Uh, but also what you can do is you can plan, you can calendarize activities. So if I want to now, you see I've got three activities already set up here, ready for today for particular groups. And I can just start them from here. Uh, and I can also, um, if I if you scroll down, you can access schemes as well. Um, but if I just, let's say, click on maths, for example, mathematics, this will take us to the national curriculum subtopics here that you probably recognise, number and all those things that are on there. Um, and then if I scroll down, you'll notice we've also got things like just skills, reasoning, problem solving, assessment. Uh, we, we, are, we do align with White Rose. We support all, all schemes. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're a tool we can use on, on our on our own, but we, we have worked with Whitebird as well if you're looking at maths. But let's say we go to assessment and you'll see here, I can bring up uh, our assessment question sets. So things like SATs practice, end of year reviews, loads of topic reviews on here, um, multiplication and ready to progress activities. And then if I just find, let's say, end of year four, curriculum review, non-arithmetic, you can see here the question sets that we have and you can review the questions beforehand. Uh, and if I click on the images, you'll see, uh, and Natalie was talking about the range of imagery that we have that supports the, the, the children, uh, as well as the feedback that they get. So by clicking on these images, you can view the different types of bar models and, and images that we use uh, to support. Uh, so once you've got an activity, you can then send these to the student devices. Um, and if I click on here, when you send to a student device, what you'll see is we generate a code, uh, a, a, this, this code here. And, and what I can then do is, once this code's created here, I can send a link to the student. So they can either click on this link or they can use a free app that we give on the device and they can join there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste uh, the link into the chat. So if anybody would like to have a go at joining us in this activity and get a child's perspective, then um, please do click on the link and you, I'm going to show you how the child connects so you can follow that and you can join me. Don't panic if you can't join, but um, if you can, uh, you're welcome to, to do that. So I've posted that in the chat. Uh, when you click on that link, 
what will happen, it'll, it'll post the code for you. So the children don't even have to put the code in, we do it. Um, if I click go, it will ask, um, are you in my class? Now, again, we're talking about saving time. So no need for CSV files or long files of children. The children actually enter the class themselves. So you can see I've already had some children enter. But um, if you do join, uh, you if you're not on that list, you can click I'm new. I can see somebody already is, uh, I think, looking to join. So um, I'm going to click I'm new. So I put in my name and then click go. And at this point, you create your own personal code. It's a number, a color, and an object. And that means that LBQ will remember you next time you log in. And so if you've halfway through a, an activity, we can resume it and you can join with those answers already in and carry on from where you're last finished. So when I click continue, it's saying, oh, hang on, the teacher's waiting to let you in because I need to check that um, you are actually in my class. So you can see I'm actually now letting people into my class. So I'll come back to that in a minute. So you, as a child, you can see there are three activities we can have running at any one time. I've just got one activity at the moment, so I'll click on it. And here now I can start to, to answer the questions. So what you'll see is if I click on an answer, so I'll have a go answering this one. And let's say I think it's image C, because I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that's obviously 2,300 and something. So we'll, we'll, we'll put that in. Uh, and when I answer it, what you'll see will happen in a second is uh, the number turns red and I get some feedback. Oh, actually, I'm incorrect. So I now can look at that feedback and have a look what it says. And hopefully that will help me to have another go. As I said, they're low state question sets. So the children can make a, an error, but not worry because they get some help to let them have another go. Uh, and it actually really helps to... Um, build up the resilience of children, I think, when answering questions, because they, there's a fear of getting things wrong quite often in the classroom, and this removes that fear. Um, we've had children saying they love it because um, it's like having a teacher by their side all the time. Uh, they don't have to put their hand up necessarily because they get the feedback first, and they can use that to help them. Um, so I can read this, and then we can retry. And so I can use that feedback to help me have another go, and I'll answer again. You notice it turns yellow. That's because I've now got it right. What I love as well is that even when the children get a question right, they get feedback, they get a model answer. So they're seeing the correct vocabulary. They're seeing a way of answering the question as well. Uh, and then you can just click next so we can have another go. So on this one here, you know, I can have a go at uh, putting in the answer and I've got that one right. Um, I'm just checking to see, I've got some of the people want to join. So I'll just let them in there. There we go. Um, Gary, I've got a quick question for you um, from yes. Jenny. I can see how this works well for Key Stage 2. What about Key Stage 1? Yeah, OK. Well, I'd very much say that LBQ is uh, probably a Key Stage 2 and above tool. When you buy into LBQ, you get um, primary and secondary resources. You get everything. Uh, we do have some Year 1 and 2 resources. Um, but because of the way we give feedback, we feel it's more of a Key Stage 2 uh, resource. Uh, I do have some Year 2 classes that use it because they find it they like to use it with uh, more able children in year two uh, and I've actually used it with year two myself and they loved it um I, I left a class with chanting we want more which was fantastic you know but uh it's uh you know I would say it, it is more of a key stage two uh, above resource yeah um sorry I'm just going to um answer this one here and then I'll I'll show you what the teacher actually sees so just do one more here and uh, we can we can answer that and so on so um, what I'm doing now is I'm just going to go back uh, as a teacher. And what you'll see is here's my class. And you can see now I'm getting responses put in there straight away. And what, what I love about this is the teacher sees this coming in live. So these are live responses. Um, and I can instantly see that if it's green, children are getting the question right. If it's red and empty, they've got it wrong once. But if it's red with a number in, that's how many times they've got it wrong. So I can see here, pupil 11, uh, six attempts. So, you know, I know when I need to go and see particular children. And the feedback that we've had from children is they love it because um, the teacher comes to see them a lot quicker than they would normally. Um, so they're getting the teacher's attention much quicker because a teacher can see when they're making mistakes. If it's yellow, it means it was incorrect, but is now correct. So a yellow with a two in tells me that... Uh, they've had two attempts and now it's correct. What I might want to do here is click on that red six 
And I can now go and have a look at what answers are putting in. Ah, one, 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 one. This person thinks they're right. And, uh, and we get this with children quite often. You know, they'll put an answer in because they think oh, it's got to be right. And uh, so we can see if they need help. And sometimes it's a, a good way for them to just, it's a, you know, to get help because I need help. I'm just going to put an answer in. But you can see here if there's any common misconceptions and you can correct them very quickly. So we can look at exactly what answers have gone in there. Um, if we look at the top here, so I'm just going to go back, you'll notice that there are colours on the top, and this is, tells me how this class is getting on, not individual pupils. So at any time I can click along the top here and I can look at uh, pupil responses, and if it's red, it tells me that most of my class are struggling. Um, so I might want to get all your attention, so at this point what I can do is pause the, the student, so if I go back as a student I can no longer answer a question. I can then draw the children's attention to the front. I can click on uh, view responses. So here I can see, right, where are they put in? Well, every child's put an acute angle in here. OK, so let's enlarge this uh, image at the front of the class. So we can now see this at the front of the class. Uh, we have interactive tools on here, so I might add text, draw lines. But what I'm going to do here is just quickly draw in a line on here. So if I draw this line there, uh, that's a right angle there, so we can see, teach you what a right angle is. There, that's it there. Uh, so I can say, right, look, there's a right angle, an acute is less than a right angle, and obtuse is more than a right angle. And now if I tap this green button, what you'll find is I've now sent this question to the whole class. And if I go back, you can see as a student, I've not only got the question, I've got the, the little bit of help that I put in there as well. And hopefully now, if you answer that question again, as a teacher, I can get the feedback from those students. And you can see here, good, you're all now getting that. So that's great. So you, you can see who's getting it, who isn't it. If uh, those who get it, good, we can stop that and then carry on. Those who aren't getting it, by the way, we can show names. So we can see who, the, who those students are. We can call them over and do some one-to-one -one or small group interventions with them. So it's a great way to use this and to stop the class, do whole class teaching, small group teaching, intervention uh, and so on now at any time we can either um, add another task so if i go to add a task because i might find some students are struggling i might want to find something less challenging or if they're finding it too easy something more challenging so what i could do here is um add another task i've got a, a short read so english let's say i can just start that task and now I've got two tasks running. So you can even run maths and English side by side uh, there if you want to. Um, the other thing as well, I can even go back and resume a previous task. So if I've already started an activity and I want to continue it, I can load uh, a task I started earlier. And if I resume that task, you'll see it will load with data already in there. And when students log in, they'll carry on from where they last finished. So we can have up to three tasks running simultaneously, and that could be for differentiation, or it could be different subjects. It's up to you how you. Harry, I've got another question for you here yep. from Emmanuel. Could this be used as a platform to set homework, and would okay. students then, you know, this, you yep. know, obviously kids get their own login. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, it's an online tool. So LBQ can be accessed from anywhere. So during lockdown. Uh, people used LBQ, who had LBQ, used it as the core uh, solution for remote learning quite often. Um, so um, we see it as an in-class teaching tool where it's most effective, but um, what you can do is you can leave any activity open until, as you can see, my activity is open until midnight today. So children could, when they go home, as long as they have that link that I sent out, they can log on and they can do this activity at home. Uh, at the end of the day, it closes down. And then what you can do the next morning is have a look at those results. And we'll come on to that in a second. See how they got on. Now, it, you know, what I see sometimes is teachers, they set homework on Monday, they check it on Friday, and on Friday they find out that the children have got it completely wrong on Monday and been doing it wrong all week. It's it's really disheartening for the children. It's very disheartening as a teacher. What we can do is say, how are they getting on? great they're going to, okay let's reopen it and off they go again the next night it takes seconds to restart Gary I'm mindful of time if I give you yeah. another minute what could okay. you what, what could you show us okay so what I want to do then is is at the end of this when you you close all this down every answer is saved 
So what Natalie was talking about is rather than spending your time on marking, it's about spending time on reflecting on what's happened in your class and where do you need to go next. So what I can do is at, um, at the end of this, I can go into uh, what we call class track. And if I show class track here, this brings up um, all the activities the children have done. And so you can see here, uh, we've got all the activities and these columns represent the activities. And I can instantly see from this, uh, if I look at Rachel R, there's a lot of green uh, and a lot of full squares. So Rachel R is getting a lot of right answers and completing a lot of tasks. Uh, where I can also see is that if someone's got red and small square, there's a, there might be an issue. And at any time I can click on that column and go back and review that lesson. And what teachers love is rather than spend their time marking, they're having a look at what has happened in my class. So who are struggling, who haven't got so far, who are getting through this very quickly. And instantly you can see here on this activity, you know, the understanding, not much of a problem, loads of green. So understanding is great. Fluency, actually, you know, it's not too bad. It's getting on, it's reasoning and problem solving. Suddenly we get into problems. And what you want to know is what are those children struggling on? So I can see question 22 here is causing problems, the red. But if I go to our dashboard, that will actually bring up the questions the children are struggling on. So I can see here straight away, I click on that question. This question is causing most problems in my class. Let's have a look at what they're putting in. Can I see if there's a common misconception? Can I see if there's a common mistake? Can I correct this very quickly? And then the next day, rather than um, waiting to the end of the week to find out there's a problem, I can come into the classroom first thing the next day, bring this question up. I can teach this to the children. We can actually write on here using our tools. Uh, and I can check they've got it. So it's about intervening where the problems uh, are occurring very quickly. Uh, and it allows me to track um, exactly what is going on with the children here. And you can compare um, best and last results. So you can start to check progress and how children are making progress as well. Thank you, Gary. I'm going to pose uh, lots of thoughts and questions. So to everyone watching, uh, put your question in the chat box that comes to me and I'll, I'll, I'll pose it on your behalf. But um, Gary, uh, you know, obviously this reduces a huge workload for teachers. I've got mm -hmm. all the things that are already there from your curriculum. Yeah. Can I also tailor my own pathway within it, within the software? Um, there's, a, there's a few things. One is um, obviously you can um, go in and just find the resources that that you want as and when you want them by yeah. just clicking on the area up here. Um, the other thing that uh, you can do is um, we have some called schemes. So, for example, if I go into maths yeah. uh, here, you'll see that we have uh, the white rows uh, we can link to and we've aligned our question sets here. So if I click on this, you'll see it opens up and links to prior learning, LBQ, small, the small steps and things. But we're also developing what we call uh, within schemes where you can actually do exactly the same thing yourself and you'll be able to create your own scheme. So there, there's, yeah, there's new things coming in as well. Gary, can I ask you if you just take the screen off just for oh, yes, to of bring can. things yes. to an end, but um, fantastic. So there's tons of stuff in there. I guess the hard question that I know Gary will find difficult to ask is I, I suspect people are thinking, how much does it cost? Um, I'll put the link in the chat box uh, for people to, to, to look and I'll send you the link also to Highlands Primary School. I'm just going to bring Natalie back in uh, to finish. Um, I guess my first question, Natalie, uh, I've got lots of thoughts. What, one, I think it's important that we all work hard to try and change the narrative on marketing and obviously you're well on that journey. Uh, one technical question about LBQ, Can, do you use it with Key Stage 1, Natalie? We have done with the, uh, with year two, like um, Gary mentioned. Um, we have used the end of year two assessments. We use them for intervention groups, um, but we do use them primarily in key stage two, most definitely. Okay. But they can be adaptable for um, for year two, definitely. There, there is go. one other thing, just one other thing, Ross, just to put in yes. there. Um, again, something we, we can do with this as well is we can do what's called ad hoc questions, um, and therefore with that you can actually um, you can actually ask a question off the top of your head and get a response. But also with our question maker, you can actually create your own question set. So, so, so yes, you can create your own question set. So, if somebody in um, you know, one wanted to create something, they possibly could. But we're very much about reducing workload for teachers, and we're, we're we're aware of that. But we do have our own question maker 
to allow you to create your own questions. There you go, folks. So you can either do it by hand yeah. or use some technology and work a little smarter. And, you know, we know that re the research and retrieval practice is conclusive, uh, really good for children's motivation, mental health. It definitely stops teachers having to mark tons and tons of stuff. And the data that you get in the moment is um, essential. And there's lots of s solutions out there, but I'm a big fan of LBQ. Um, Gary, how many questions do you have on your database? It's uh, so we have over 90,000 90, questions. 90, so my, and, and it, it, you know, the, I, I probably, I'm probably 91,000. And no, no, you know, it's growing all the time. And um, I, I have seen the physical books, actually. They're enormous. Yes. So they're, 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 <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, yeah. They're, there is the paper version of the books, folks, if you want them. Uh, right, I'm yeah. going to wrap things up. Um, can I say thank you to Gary for your wonderful slick demo. Natalie, um, 17 more sleeps for you. Uh, thank you for all your hard work <laughs> and your amazing work to try and reduce this marking narrative and, and, and raise the profile of staff well-being. I've got a final question for you both to wrap things up. Um, what do you both hope to have under the Christmas tree? Oh, um... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, well, I had a Ferrari. I don't know. I could have a Ferrari, yeah. We'll, we'll, Thank you. we'll, we'll ask Santa. Natalie, your last chance. Um, do you know what? After this week, I'd say a new car as well. A new um, car, there you go. Um, I've got one final tip. Uh, inspired by Dylan William, uh, many of you know, but um, in terms of mark and approach, 25% mark, 25% get the kids to do self-assessment, 25% peer assessment and 25% skim. Uh, so there you go, quarter marking, do it in chunks. And we know marking is one part of feedback, feedback, feed up, feed forward, verbal, written and non-verbal. There are many ways to provide kids with feedback. I'm gonna leave it there. Natalie, thank you very much. Lovely to meet you, you and lovely to hear all your amazing uh, work. And uh, Gary, thank you very much uh, once again from LBQ. Um, my name is Ross McGill, I hope you're well. Keep safe. I will send the slides and this video recording to you tomorrow. Have a lovely evening and thank you for joining us. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye, Gary. Bye, Bye Natalie. Bye. Thank you. Bye.